I'm well. I'm the bald book geek. And call out culture is killing creativity. Let's talk. So, first things first. Let's start this whole conversation. Simply and easily. Booktube and Twitter have a very, very strong and very mo vocal YA group. Like, really vocal. To the point that y you do kind of end up thinking, what the hell? You know. But let's start this simply and easily. It's becoming really toxic and quite strange. So let's start with the root of the thing. A Chinese writer will write a book about Chinese people in China. Be it family, be it history. A black person will write an adult fantasy novel based on African legend or Jamaican fairy tales. Then a very entitled 20-something year old white woman, hetero, will call them out because their books are not woke enough. Woke is a word that I hate, and competitive wokeness is rife. Like, I'm not kidding with the competitive wokeness sometimes. You do end up wondering, why don't you, why don't these people just go climb their hill and go die on it? But that's where the problem lies. Without naming names, a gay writer, a YA writer, did a book about a gay teenager. These entitled white hetero women were calling this writer out for the book not being queer enough. So a gay writer writing a gay character is not queer enough because there are no lesbians. It was based on his story and it was semi-autobiographical. That's what I found strange about the whole thing. Like, this book is not woke enough, so you're going to stand on your high horse and attack it. It, it always seems to be these people attacking YA writers, especially new writers, up-and-coming writers. They're also extremely American. They have very little context of the outside world and cultural differences of different places. Our relationship with race, with sexuality, with gender is the same on some levels and different on others. It's just the nature of the beast. It's simple. And some people don't understand that. The American centritism of this, this bubble of toxicity on Twitter amongst YA writers and YA readers is strong and it's worrying, again, because they have no concept of the outside world. Also, they're quite willing to call out these new writers that don't necessarily have the power to fight back or are new writers that are necessarily scared of repercussions. To the point books get cancelled, people misinterpret things, they get mobs going after them. Prime example is The Black Witch. It was not a very good book, but it was set in a racist world with racist characters. Yet at the end of that book, they weren't, she changed her mind, she grew and evolved. And it's this policing of fault that you cannot expose young people to negative characters and negative people. The character grows and evolves. It's not going to be some Mary Sue or some god-awful I'm not like other girls trope. But then we come into things that get even weirder. They won't go after some very interesting writers that have a lot more power than them. Brandon Sanderson, for example. He is a homophobic idiot. I'm not a Sanderson fan. I can't stand his books and I tried reading them before I knew about his opinions. And I couldn't. I just couldn't get into them. I, I don't like his style of writing. I find him quite generic and predictable. But the guy did a very homophobic, very homophobic blog post that seems to have come and gone and people just breeze over it because Brandon Sanderson can fight back. He's a very wealthy man with a lot of power in the publishing industry and book industry. And he has his fans. We all know that Orson Scott Card is an idiot. Bigot. And people don't seem to be willing to do anything. They don't answer with their power. Although I hate Ender's Game. I hated that book as a child and I hate it even more as an adult. 
It's not particularly well written. It's a prime example of the Mary Sue trope. Call out culture is going to destroy creativity. And I'm so glad that my debut novel is not in the YA bubble. It's not YA. I didn't write a YA book. And it's simple. I didn't want to. I didn't want to get involved in that. So we come down to it. And you wind up thinking, what the hell happened? I've talked about this before. I will probably talk about it again. But as a gay man, can I not write hetero characters? That's another misnomer. That's another thing that I found. Like, there was someone moaning that a gay man had written a straight couple in a book on a forum. And it was quite a small one. But you're like, really? You really think that? Creativity is can be suppressed. Censorship is suppression. Don't get me wrong, I'm more than happy to call people out on their crap. I am more than willing if they deserve it. But I worry that this suppression of ideas, the American centritism, and the idea that there are 20-something year old white hetero women policing thought and policing what we should read and what media we should consume, I'm an adult. I'm going to make up my own mind. Simple. I will read what I want to read. I will write what I want to write and I will create what I want to create. So my suggestion to these people that like to do this, to these very entitled people that are policing fault and creativity and creating a really toxic atmosphere to the point young writers are terrified Go climb your hill, get on your high, nice high hills and go die on it. You can hide behind aliases, you can break private Twitter accounts when all the shit hits the fan and it all comes back to you when you've been proved wrong. We need to stop policing idea and fault and it worries me that people are demanding this level of censorship. I am a very, very liberal, very gay guy that really detests it. When you see people demanding censorship of classics on Twitter, demanding that rewriting these books, it's kind of like, why? Stop attacking people. Stop attacking people that are voiceless. Stop suppressing minority writers. Stop creating this really bizarre, toxic atmosphere. Is that too much to ask for?